Hey, Miles here at Tactical Hive. Today's video is primarily for iron sight shooters, but what I'm going to discuss also does apply to red dot shooters in a sense, which I'll get to after we discuss iron sights. If you shoot iron sights, it is super important in a practical sense to have a very, very bright front sight. There are lots of different sight manufacturers out there. Some will be fiber optic, some will be uh, tritium, but you really wanna be able to pick up that front sight immediately. And when I'm talking about very bright, fiber optics are extremely bright, but you can do better than this, right? If you're outdoors, the light is going to be shining into that fiber optic, really helping, but what if you're indoors, things like that. And also with fiber optics, usually that bright circle is pretty tiny. So it is great, it's great, but imagine now you could double or triple the size of that fiber optic. It's gonna stand out a lot more. Now you might be wondering why. Why isn't the typical tritium sights or fiber optic sight good enough? Well, it is, it is good enough, but it can be better. It can be improved. And I'm talking about having a bright front sight from the paradigm that you are training primarily for self-defense. We're not talking about competition. We're not talking about target practice or plinking or anything like that, where sometimes having a very thin front sight is going to help you in competition and be more precise with longer shots. Whereas in practical applications, and if you've done a lots of force and force, you will know that things, you know, threats pop up from left and right. And you probably already know that you don't always see your sights, no matter how well you're trained. It is based on the scenario, or I should say it depends on the scenario. If you have time and space, you might have that ability to pick up your sights. But if someone just pops out of nowhere, you're just going to point and shoot. That said, even if you are instinctively shooting, you want to do as much as you can to get visual information that your sights are on target. You may not see your sights, but imagine here, this is one of the force and force guns we use. And we do this on purpose for all of our classes where we are using bright neon orange nail polish, right? And we, we literally paint the entire front sight here. The reason being is we know not a lot of people are going to see their sights, but we want something that could potentially stand out to them under stress, under anxiety, when they're really panicking, their sensory overload, they might still pick up some kind of orange and have an idea of where their sights are on a threat and they can break that shot. Without this, then it might be more challenging or difficult. Imagine having a black front sight or a thin fiber optic here where you might be in a situation where you can't really see this very well or it doesn't stand out. So it's very important to think about the size or I should say the visibility of your front sight. Under pressure, you're most likely not gonna see it. So anything you can do to help improve the chances of seeing some kind of reference so that you have more information to take an accurate shot is going to be helpful. Red dot shooters, kind of in a similar manner here with red dots, you can shoot completely fine with a red dot, but now imagine if you had it a little bit brighter and you, you know, again, things are happening really fast, you also won't see your red dot. If it was a tiny red dot that you're using for precision and competition shooting or any other application, let's say plinking. But if you need to have visual information quickly under stress, perhaps brightening that or increasing the size of that red dot would be more helpful because as you're under you know, panicking, under stress, and you present, you might see a little bit of that red dot that gives you some information that lets you know, okay, my sights are on target, then you can break the shot. There are a lot of great sight manufacturers out there who already understand that you need a really bright front sight, so that's a good thing. But don't feel like you have to stop there. Sometimes you know, your eyes, your vision is gonna be different than mine, for example. My eyes are getting really bad, so anything I can do to really stand, have the front sight stand out is very helpful for me. And you have to consider, okay, is this good enough for you and your vision? For example, the SIG X-ray sights, they use this bright green. I love it, I love, I love this, and this works for me. But we use orange in our force and force classes because this tends to stand out even more. Some people, you know, their eyes, their vision, you know, everyone's different. They might be attracted to red, attracted to green, attracted to yellow, attracted to orange. You want something that's gonna stand out to you. 
You can do the same thing with red dots, although of course red dots right now, I, unless um, there are new manufacturers uh, making different colors, but I know that primarily you're gonna find green and red, but you can adjust the brightness and you can, for some manufacturers, get different MOA red dots, so some red dots are bigger. So think about that, because when we're talking about force and force civilian applications and in deadly conflict up close, you're probably not gonna see your sights. Now, I've never been in a, an actual gunfight. I'm basing everything on force and force but i talked to a lot of our smes I've, I've been to a lot of training and seeing your sights up close when things are happening very fast is very unlikely so you need all the help you can get to get some kind of visual reference so you can break that shot so i hope you guys like that quick video i think it's very important to understand what you're training for and if you are training for self-defense make sure you stack the odds in your favor if you're an iron sight shooter make sure you can see that front sight immediately or at least have really bright so you can take in some information and if you're a red dot shooter consider using a color that really stands out to you increasing your dot size and or increasing the brightness what iron sight or red dot setup do you use? Love to hear it in the comments below. That might help out other people in terms of finding different options that might work for them. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing allows our videos to reach more people and given that a lot of these social media platforms these days don't like the 2A community and are suppressing a lot of our reach, it does really help. So don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video.